All right, so Harvard scientists just launched a review paper today suggesting that poor disease outcomes and increased disease severity in this COVID-19 pandemic is linked with advanced aging of the immune system. The title of the paper, I'm just so excited to share this with you. The title of the paper is COVID-19 as an emergent disease of aging. So check this out. I'm 37 years old, my cells are 40. I don't know how old you are, but your cells may or may not be on par with your chronologic age. We've talked about testing your epigenetic age before on this YouTube channel at length since you know Steve Horvath published uh, data back in, it was August of 2019, I believe, with the Horvath clock and using you know, metformin and, and growth hormone and DHA as strategies to slow down the so-called thymic involution, which is advanced aging of the thymus gland, which is a gland where majority of your T lymphocytes originate and are created. And we know that in individuals that have increased disease severity and poor outcomes in the wake of COVID-19 have low levels of their white blood cells, which is characterized, and we've done a hypothesis video on this, I'll link below, immunosenescence. And finally, Harvard scientists are talking about this. They're talking about the idea that increased disease severity is linked with immunosenescence. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, why should I give a crap about immunosenescence? Well, tomorrow on a webinar at noon Pacific Standard Time, 3 Eastern, I'm gonna share with you that the age of your immune system and, and your biologic age is modifiable with your diet, with your lifestyle, with your nutrition, with your exercise, with your mindset. All this is modifiable. We can affect this. Now, what these scientists also showed with detailed medical records of over 710 individuals that died in Italy, only 2% of those that died did not have one of these diseases, okay? High blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, okay? If you look at 60% of the individuals that died had hypertension. If you look here, look at that. It's crazy. Okay, 50% of individuals that, dis that were deceased in Italy from this disease had three or more diet and lifestyle and exercise related chronic comorbidities. So look, there's people that have bad genetics, you know, genetic increased predisposition towards developing hypertension, idiopathic hypertension as, it, as it's called. But majority of people that have, you have three chronic diseases, if you have cancer and diabetes and heart disease, I, I, I really would find it very hard to believe that we could blame genetics on all of those. Okay, so our nutrition, our lifestyle choices, our stress management or lack thereof, our exercise habits, our sleep habits and circadian rhythms and hygiene and, and, and sleep hygiene, all of these things impact our biologic age. So on tomorrow's webinar, I'm gonna teach you all the details of this, immunonutrition, immunosenescence. I'll share with you the results of my DNA age, um, my epigenetic age, and I think all of us should get this age so we have, a, we have a good idea. You know, if you're only 37 and your epigenetic age suggests that you're 25, Really, I mean, your risk of developing a poor outcome with any infectious disease is probably pretty low because your thymic involution hasn't really kicked in. But if you're 35 and your epigenetic age says you're 50, you really need to take some steps to mitigate things. And I think, again, that the data is hinting at this. And we're seeing this in, in you know, anecdotal stories where people say, hey, Sally Smith is only 32 and she's on a ventilator. She can barely breathe. Well. Just because Sally's 32 doesn't mean that her biology is 32. It could be 52. There are some people that have a, a huge disparity in their chronologic age compared to their biologic age. And the cool thing about knowing this and what we're gonna talk about on the webinar is this is modifiable. You can influence your body's aging and slow it down and modify it. You know, Steve Horvath showed that with growth hormone, with DHA, with metformin. It's, it, you know, I'm taking a lot more berberine than I used to now, taking my sleep more seriously. I'm gonna retest my epigenetic age and see if it's having an impact. And it would be really cool to see some changes. And I think you should be able to do this too. So tomorrow we're gonna to talk about that. We're gonna do a full detailed video on this paper, but I just wanted to hop on real quick here. It's like seven o'clock in the evening here on Tuesday on my phone and share with you because I get excited about this. I think you should know about these things. Um, if you wanna learn more about this, I'll put links there. And I'll also put links to other videos where we talked about immunosenescence and cellular aging. 
and the Horvath clock, epigenetics. It's really exciting stuff. So uh, friends, hope, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. I know it's like kind of funny on my phone and all that, but uh, super grateful that you were here. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope to see you tomorrow. And we'll also probably do another webinar on Saturday, just seeing how things go tomorrow. But um, anyway, have a good night or a good day and uh, catch you soon. Bye now.